Hey guys, last thing we want to talk about is market failure with merit goods and positive externalities. Okay, and this will cap off the section on market failure. So remember what merit goods are. Merit goods tend to be underprovided and underconsumed in a free market economy. Why? Because the market, private agents, don't take into account the positive externalities in production and or consumption. As a result, there tends to be an under provision and under consumption of them. All right. So whenever we talk about negative, uh, whenever we talk about positive externalities and merit goods, we need to know the diagram for it again. So let me just quickly go through the diagram. So again, on the y-axis, we've got price, costs, and benefits, and quantity on the x-axis there. Okay. So now we're assuming no negative externalities. So we've got the marginal social cost is equal to the marginal private cost because there are no negative externalities we're assuming. Okay, then we have our marginal private benefit curve, but we know there's going to be a discrepancy between the marginal private benefit and the marginal social benefit because the marginal social benefit takes into account external benefits, positive externalities. As a result, MSB is going to be greater than MPB, okay, as shown on the diagram. Okay. So, the market allocates resources at this point, okay, only considering private benefits of economic agents, pricing of P, whereas, these, whereas society would like goods to be allocated at point Q star, etc. Okay? So that's where society would like goods to be allocated at, that's where the market is currently allocated, we've got under provision, that's the market failure as a result of the negative externality. There's a welfare loss involved here. The way we show that, we move up from the point that the market's at to where the benefits would be, okay, given the marginal social benefit. So that's where the benefits would be if we were producing where the marginal social benefit okay, um, is given the level of uh, cost at that point. Okay, so that's where we would prefer to produce if we're at that point. As a result, because we're producing less, we lose that whole triangle. By producing a point P here instead. Okay, so that's the welfare loss um, of the units that we're not producing, considering we're a point Q. Okay, so that's the problem we've got with uh, Merrick's and positive externalities. If you want to know the diagram, uh, the diagram, the equation for it, it's MSB is equal to MPB plus MEB. Okay, so the marginal social benefit is equal to the marginal private benefit plus the marginal external benefit, and that's the key thing there. Okay, that's not included in private benefits, okay, the external benefits. So that's the very simple problem with merit goods and positive externalities. So, just like with negative externalities and demerit goods and pollution and things, there's now a rationale for government intervention. If something's happening in the market which isn't designed by society, well then there's a case for government intervention. And one of the ways it can intervene with merit goods, well, it can offer subsidies subsidies to private firms if the private firms are allocating these goods. Okay, so they could subsidize these firms, reduce their costs, um, hopefully passing on the lower price to the consumers and increasing output levels closer to the socially optimum level. Okay, so they could offer subsidies or if there's a missing market for these merit goods or if they don't think subsidies are going to work in trying to get the quantity uh, level up to our socially optimum level is, well, it could actually provide all the resources the state can. So, state provision is another alternative too. Okay, so there are two ways the government can intervene. So, we, we talked a lot about subsidies last year. Okay, and again, the arguments for and against are exactly the same. Okay, so, arguments for the reason why it's good, we just talked about it, increasing output levels by lowering costs of production. Okay, but you need to know what the problems are with it. So, one, it depends the effect of the subsidy depends on the elasticity of demand. The key thing is we want to increase quantity. But if demand for that product is quite price inelastic, well then quantity is not going to increase much as the price level falls. Okay, so it depends on the elasticity of demand. If it's inelastic, the effect will be minimal. It also might be quite inefficient because we might be subsidizing firms that themselves are not efficient. So if you give subsidies to these firms, well we're not actually doing the best we can with the money there. So it can be inefficient if given to the wrong firms. It also carries a very large opportunity cost. So the cost of actually subsidising firms is very expensive. 
and we could argue, well, that money could have been best spent somewhere else. Okay, so the opportunity cost involves subsidies too. So that's all the same as last year. Okay, we're going to focus on this notion of state provision uh, now. So state provision, uh, very simply, is when the state decides to provide all of these resources to a market. So bear in mind what the key merit goods are in society. One is education, okay, and two is healthcare because they have massive external benefits attached to them. We all know what those are from last year. Okay, so the government could decide to provide all these resources. Okay, and what happens when it does? Well, let's have a look. So we'll draw it on a diagram. So if the government intervenes in the market, let's call this price and this quantity. Okay, price quantity. So if the government's providing all the resources, a fixed amount of resources, well, supply is going to be vertical, isn't it? Call that S. Okay. Demand is just going to be normal, okay, so normal downward sloping demand, we're assuming that, okay. Uh, I'm actually going to make that go all the way down there. So, if the government provides all the resources, there could be two reasons for that. One, either the quantity level currently being provided by the private sector is not high enough, and it doesn't think subsidies are going to be good enough to increase the quantity level of these goods. So it decides, the government decides to just provide them all. That's one reason why, why it might provide all the resources. The second reason is because merit goods, like education and healthcare, you could argue, are goods that no one should be excluded from consuming. Okay? No one should be uh, disallowed the right to an education. No one should be rejected the chance for healthcare. Okay? So you could argue that these things all citizens in an economy deserve, therefore should be provided, not just provided, but provided free of charge too. No one should be excluded educational health care. So the government could intervene for that reason too, okay? not to exclude anybody. So by intervening in these markets, it will set the price at zero, right, so right at the bottom there. And as a result, demand is all the way down here, where a supply is only at this point. So, this whole triangle is going to be an excess demand. All right? So by the state intervening, yes, we get a quantity of goods provided. And if there was a missing market before, well, this is straight away an improvement, isn't it? Okay? But by actually intervening, we're going to have a large excess demand because everyone is now going to demand free education and free healthcare. So how do we ration this excess demand? That's the tricky thing with straight provision. Okay? And we've seen it with the NHS at the moment. There's a massive excess demand for healthcare, and simply, we don't have the resources to cope at the moment. So, how do we ration healthcare? Well, either you can put in waiting lists like we have with the NHS at the moment, but you can try and treat people given severity of condition. Okay, we can try and do that as well. But the problem with both of those things, they're very subjective. Okay, very subjective. How can we actually choose who deserves um, to actually be treated first, as opposed to somebody else? It's a very subjective thing, a very normative judgement to make. So economies don't like it very much. Okay? We could also try I don't know, a lottery draw, just pick it out at random, maybe that's the fairest way. But again, that doesn't seem to be a very efficient way of looking at it. So massive problems are trying to ration this demand. Okay? The other problem we have with state provision, it's very, very costly okay, for the state to provide all these resources. We can see at the moment just how much the NHS costs to run. Um, and at the moment, people are saying, well, there aren't even enough resources being provided. So the government is trying to solve the market failure. It's trying to get to the social optimum level, but it's failing to do so. It costs so much, it can only provide so much. So society would actually like supply to come all the way down here, but the government just simply can't afford it. And especially at the moment with massive budget problems, it's very hard to actually um, provide the right number of resources because of the cost involved. Another problem we have is that state-run organisations, state-run departments, tend to be very inefficient. Okay, and this could be a cause of government failure. Uh, we know that because there's no profit motive, the costs can spiral out of control. The inefficiencies can go out of control. And therefore, the effects of these organisations might not be as great as it could be in the private sector. So all problems with state provision there. Uh, but if there's a missing market, at least something is being provided. All right, so that's something you can evaluate. Another time we need to look at solving market failures with public goods. So we know with public goods they tend to be non-excludable, we can't exclude someone from using it by charging the price because we can't confine the benefits to the people that pay uh, only. Uh, 
and they tend to be non-diminishable. So one person using that public good uh, doesn't actually restrict the supply available to somebody else using it. So because of these two characteristics, we have a free rider problem. So third parties can free ride um, on someone else's use of that uh, good or someone else trying to actually pay for that good. They can free ride from that. Um, as a result, there's no incentive to provide it by the free market. So you could argue, well, there's a case for government intervention there. And if it's a case where no one's going to provide it, we're going to have a missing market. So state provision seems the obvious way of solving that problem. But we still have the same problems we talked about before with that too. Okay, so that's market failure with merit goods, positive externalities, and public goods. That kind of rounds up the whole section of market failure and government failure. You now have all the notes you need at A2 for that. Um, so yeah, I hope that's uh, done it for you guys. Thank you very much.